subscribe this channel for educational videos and also don't forget to press the bell icon in order to get the instant notifications of our latest stuff hello everyone uh, i welcome you all to this online course on uh, wireless communication our today's topic is uh, capacity expansion uh, in cellular systems so let's start this lecture as we see the demand of wireless users uh, in the present time is uh, growing uh, very rapidly and uh, uh, when the demand of uh, such mobile users uh, increase and uh, then the capacity and coverage area of a cellular system need to be uh, increased okay we have to accommodate uh, more and more number of uh, users uh, in a particular region or in a particular area and uh, for that we have to increase the capacity of our uh, cellular system so that uh, we can accommodate more number of uh, users and uh, for that matter we have to uh, increase the number of uh, channels uh, in a uh, in a particular area or in uh, per unit coverage uh, area and uh, uh, with the help of uh, increased number of uh, channels uh, we will be able to accommodate uh, more number of subscribers uh, in that particular region and uh, for that matter we have uh, different techniques uh, to uh, increase the capacity of a cellular system and uh, uh, number one uh, in that category is uh, cell splitting and after that uh, we have uh, uh, sectoring or cell sectoring and uh, the third one is uh, micro cell zone uh, approach okay uh, these are three uh, main techniques uh, that we use to increase the uh, capacity of a uh, cellular system okay we increase the capacity of a cellular system cellular system okay with the help of these techniques uh, we increase the capacity of a cellular system Fine. Uh, let's examine uh, these techniques uh, one by one. Uh, number one is uh, cell splitting, and cell splitting is a, a process of subdividing a congested cell into a smaller cell. Uh, initially, we have a bigger cell, or uh, you can say an older cell, and uh, that is broken down into a uh, smaller cell. And the original uh, old cell or the bigger cell is called as a, a macro cell, and the newly formed cell is called as a uh, micro cell okay we reduce uh, the area of a bigger cell into a smaller cell the older cell is called as a macro cell and the newly created cell is called as a uh, micro cell and each of these micro cells uh, which are created they have their own base station and uh, these base stations have uh, reduced antenna height and also they have the reduced transmission power why we uh, use this uh, reduced antenna height and reduced transmission power because we have to avoid interference uh, we reduce the power so that it should not interfere the other channels in the uh, in the adjoining cell okay and that's why we uh, need to have reduced antenna height and reduced transmission power in the newly created cells and with this approach uh, the number of times the channels are reused because we create a smaller smaller cells and uh, with the help of that we can reuse the same channels in these smaller small cells and uh, with the help of that number of times the channels the available channels they are uh, more number of times they are reused as compared to the earlier approach where we had only one bigger cell as the area of cell decreases the number of cells in a coverage region increases when we decrease the area then we require more number of uh, cells for example if we use smaller cells instead of a bigger cell then we require more number of cells to cover a uh, to cover the same region and also uh, this process further increases the number of clusters or uh, the cluster size is increased or you can say it increases the number of clusters in order to cover the same area and hence uh, the channels are increased which further increases the capacity of a cellular system and uh, when we go on reducing the uh, cell size and if we uh, cut the radius of a cell into half then we require four times approximately more cells approximately we require four times more cells to cover a given, given geographic area uh, because uh, we know that uh, for a uh, circular shape the area is pi uh, pi r square okay pi r square and when we reduce this r into r by 2 then the area uh, would be pi r by 2 square and 
this will be equal to pi r square divided by 4. So we require 4 times more number of uh, cells to cover the same geographic area. Okay. The minimum co-channel reuse ratio, it is denoted by Q. This Q is basically equals to D by R and this ratio has to be maintained. This D is the distance between the co-channel cells and the co-channel cells are the cells which are using the same, same channels and this R is the radius of a cell and this ratio has to be maintained and as we reduce R by 2 then this D has to be reduced in order to maintain this ratio okay and further the power at the boundaries of new and old cells should be same as we see that new cells being uh, smaller in size and they need a reduction in the transmission power to maintain signal to interference ratio so we have to maintain signal to interference ratio and uh, that's why the power at the boundaries of new and old cells they, it should be same and uh, for example uh, if we denote transmission power in the uh, new cell with pt n and uh, uh, similarly if we uh, denote uh, the transmission power in the old cell as uh, pt o and uh, uh, if we uh, say that p r o that is uh, power received at the boundaries of old cell and uh, power received at the boundaries of new cell then these will be proportional to pt that is a transmission power in the old cell into radius raised to power minus n okay uh, here n is path loss of exponent path loss exponent and it has a value of uh, uh, 3 4 5 or 6 depending upon the uh, terrain that you are using in a particular network and uh, similarly you have uh, power received at the boundaries of new cell will be equal to pt n that is transmission power uh, in the new cell into r divided by 2 raised power minus n because we have to, re to do reduce the radius uh, new cell by half okay and uh, as I said that uh, power at the boundaries, uh, power received at the boundaries of new and old cells should be uh, same. Uh, and uh, if we take the value of n equals to 4, then uh, we can say that uh, pt o into r raised to power minus 4 equals to pt n into r by 2 raised to power minus 4. Fine. And which implies that ETN that is uh, uh, transmitted power in the uh, new cell should be equal to 1 by 16 into transmitted power in the old cell okay uh, from this equation uh, you can see that uh, the power uh, transmitted power in the new cell it should be reduced by a factor of uh, 1 by 16 uh, in our when we uh, create a new cell okay and uh, this uh, the power should be reduced by this factor in order to avoid the interference fine and this is this power is in milliwatt and when we convert this power into uh, db uh, then uh, it should be uh, it will become equal to 12 db uh, now uh, in practice it is uh, not always possible to uh, split uh, cells at the same time so it is often uh, difficult for the service providers to find the, uh, the real estate that is perfectly situated for a cell splitting process uh, therefore different cell sizes uh, will exist simultaneously and uh, uh, because of this uh, different cell sizes uh, uh, the channel assignment becomes really complicated uh, because uh, you have a bigger cell you have smaller cells so channel assignment uh, will uh, become uh, problematic and uh, it will become a complicated process so uh, and also uh, handoff is another issue that will arise there uh, because uh, the bigger cells they can accommodate uh, the handoff at uh, a, a very high traffic uh, whereas uh, the lower uh, the smaller cells they will accommodate a traffic uh, with the uh, low speed okay so uh, this uh, handoff uh, becomes another issue uh, because uh, you have different cell sizes and uh, uh, you cannot uh, devise uh, some 
sufficient mechanisms uh, to address the handoff okay and uh, same transmit power uh, cannot be uh, used for all the cells for all cells means for new and old cells and that is for bigger and uh, smaller cells uh, because of the uh, following reasons uh, if we use uh, large transmission power for all cells then there will be some channels in uh, smaller cells uh, they would not be sufficiently uh, separated from each other or separated from uh, co-channel cells and uh, on the other hand if we use smaller transmission power uh, then there would be some parts of larger cell they would they will remain uh, unserved fine uh, that's the main uh, problem so uh, for this reason uh, the the channels in the old cell they must be broken down into uh, two channel groups and uh, uh, one uh, out of that uh, one channel group should correspond uh, to the uh, requirements uh, or you can say uh, the reuse requirements of a smaller cell and uh, the other uh, group of channels should correspond to the uh, reuse requirement of the uh, bigger group fine and in general and the larger cell is usually dedicated to a high speed traffic so that handoffs occur less frequently fine two channel groups uh, group sizes depend on the stage of cell splitting uh, process at the beginning of the cell splitting process there will be uh, fewer channels in the small group power groups however as the demand grows and uh, a more number of channels will be required and thus the smaller groups uh, will require more channels and this splitting process continues until all the channels in an area are used in the low power group and uh, at this point uh, you can say that that uh, cell splitting process is complete uh, within that particular region and the entire system is res rescaled to have a smaller radius per cell okay and to limit uh, radio coverage uh, we can use uh, antenna down, down tilting uh, because that deliberately focuses uh, radiated energy from base station towards the ground fine and in uh, cell splitting the capacity measurement uh, uh, is taken as a uh, number of channels per square kilometer okay this is how the uh, capacity of a cell system is uh, measured in cell splitting uh, process fine uh, in cell splitting uh, process uh, i just want to show uh, how it actually works when we reduce the uh, cell size and uh, for example you have this uh, bigger cell uh, like this and let me draw a few more cells this is how uh, uh, generally your uh, this uh, uh, geographic area is uh, covered and uh, when you uh, cut the radius of a uh, cell into half so this is how your new cell will be formed okay now this will be your uh, new smaller uh, cell uh, in the similar fashion you can uh, draw a smaller cell here also uh, in this fashion and uh, similarly here you can draw a uh, smaller cell fine so new structure would be uh, like this okay these are some uh, smaller cell with the radius uh, r by 2 and uh, uh, we see that in cell splitting we reduce the radius uh, by a factor of 2 uh, but there is another uh, factor or uh, you can say the d by r ratio uh, you can also use an approach where we can reduce this uh, d by r while keeping a radius of uh, of the cell as constant okay but uh, we see this uh, by reducing this uh, we can uh, actually increase the capacity of a cell system but this d is uh, a function of signal to interference ratio so when we uh, decrease this signal to interference ratio we can actually decrease the value of d and this further decreases the value of n that is your cluster size fine because this d by r is equal to square root of 3n and further you can write it as d is equal to square root of 3n into r so when you reduce d your n will also uh, decrease that is your cluster size and when you have reduced cluster size then you can have uh, uh, more number of uh, channels because you require more number of cells and uh, when you require more number of cells then you will have uh, and the uh, uh, more number of ways to reuse the cells fine now uh, sectoring 
uh, in sectoring the cell radius is uh, kept unchanged and uh, what we do is this d by r ratio sought to be decreased we try to decrease this uh, d by r uh, ratio uh, this d is the distance between two co-channel cells and r is the radius and uh, uh, along with this uh, we use uh, some uh, sectored antennas or uh, directional antennas in or uh, in place of uh, omnidirectional antennas and with the help of those directional antennas we basically improve the signal to interference ratio okay and the number of cells in a cluster uh, is decreased to increase the frequency uh, reuse however it is uh, necessary to uh, reduce uh, the relative interference uh, as we see our approach is to uh, reduce the number of cells in a cluster uh, uh, in order to increase the frequency reuse when we uh, reduce the number of cells uh, we can we have to use more number of cells and uh, to cover a geographic area in that case we can increase the frequency reuse uh, of the same uh, channels and uh, it is uh, however it is necessary to reduce the relative interference with the decrease in the transmission power but, but on the other side uh, we see we have to reduce the transmission power uh, as well in order to uh, avoid the relative interference but here uh, for that purpose what we do is uh, we replace a single omnidirectional antenna uh, with several directional antennas at the uh, center uh, where we are using this base station uh, on that base station we replace this single antenna and uh, with several directional antennas or you can say sector antennas which radiate within a specified sector okay and uh, this allows a given cell to transmit and receive interference uh, with only a fraction of uh, available co-channel cells uh, that is one third in case of 120 degrees sectoring uh, we can go for sectoring either at 120 degree or 60 degree for a cell and only one third of uh, the total available uh, co-channel cells uh, they get affected with the uh, with the interference in this uh, uh, approach fine and uh, uh, next we see that uh, sectoring approaches uh, we mainly go for uh, sectoring at 120 degree and uh, uh, 60 degree let me uh, show you this uh, through a diagram uh, This is what we call as a 120 degree uh, sectoring approach, and uh, this one is a 60 degree uh, sectoring. And here you see, uh, in 120 degree sectoring, you can have uh, uh, three sectors in a uh, single cell. One, two, three. At one, uh, they are uh, done at 120 degree. Whereas when we go for uh, 60 degree sectoring, we will have uh, uh, six uh, sectors uh, in a, in a single cell. And in this technique, the channels uh, used in a particular cell are broken down into uh, sectored groups, uh, and uh, and they are uh, used only uh, within a particular sector, uh, as as you see uh, as shown in this uh, diagram. And uh, for a seven-cell re reuse case, so the number of interferers in the first tire uh, is reduced from uh, six to uh, six to two uh, if one twenty-degree se sectoring is done. Uh, you can see it from this uh, diagram uh, when we use uh, a seven-cell approach. Uh, uh, seven cell reuse uh, approach uh, in order to cover a uh, uh, given geographic area you will have this kind of uh, uh, cell structure uh, in seven cell one two three uh, four five and six here you have six interferers with this particular cell and uh, but when you use this 120 degree uh, sectoring approach you will have uh, only three uh, only two uh, these uh, interferers uh, like uh, to this particular sector Sector 1 will have this and this as interferer and sector 2 will have this and this interferer and likewise sector 3 will have this and this as interferers. So it will reduce from uh, 6 to uh, 2. Okay. And uh, this uh, sectoring approach, uh, this has uh, uh, certain drawbacks as well and uh, you can say that the sectoring although improves uh, signal to uh, interference uh, ratio. Uh, and uh, this is a signal to interference s upon i it's not s upon r uh, so it improves the uh, signal to interference ratio and the resulting capacity uh, of the uh, of the cellular system but at the cost of uh, uh, more number of uh, antennas at the base station as i said we replace the single omnidirectional antenna uh, with uh, with the sector antennas more number of sector antennas are used 
uh, and uh, also uh, it increases the uh, handoff probability because uh, now we have uh, uh, three sectors in one single cell and uh, all these uh, three sectors will have uh, different groups of channels so when the mobile user will move from one sector to, a, to our uh, second sector to third sector then the, the, the handoff will occur and uh, definitely it is going to put some burden on the uh, MSC as well okay and uh, further you have uh, reduced ranking uh, efficiency uh, earlier uh, when we had only single cell there was only single uh, channel pool uh, and uh, uh, to out of that, that channel pool uh, the subscribers can use the uh, channels uh, in order to start the conversa conversation but uh, uh, when we divide uh, the the cell into uh, different sectors uh, in that case so you will have a reduced number of pool or you will have a more, smaller uh, pools and uh, uh, out of these three pools uh, sometimes it is possible that uh, uh, two uh, of these three pools may be uh, being used effectively but there will be one uh, pool uh, which will which may not be uh, used so effectively because uh, there may not be any user to uh, perform the services so that's why uh, this is uh, this uh, reduces the tracking uh, efficiency of the system okay our next approach is a micro uh, cell zone uh, approach and uh, uh, in this uh, micro uh, cell zone approach uh, uh, that is given by uh, a scientist uh, named Lee, Lee and uh, what we see that uh, in sectoring uh, channels have to be uh, partitioned between different sectors of a cell which results in need of uh, handoff so handoff was a uh, major problem in the previous uh, technique that that is uh, sectoring and uh, uh, that's why uh, you can say that the load will be on some switching and uh, controlling elements of the mobile uh, cell system so uh, a solution to this problem uh, was lee's micro cell zone concept and in this uh, there is one base station at the center of uh, the each cell but there are three uh, zone sites uh, located at the uh, corners of a, a cell uh, i will draw the uh, structure here uh, how this will uh, look like uh, for example you have a cell Uh, the structure of this micro uh, cell zone uh, approach is like this uh, here you have this one cell and uh, these uh, corners they are showing the uh, these three zone sites and uh, all the three zone sites act uh, as uh, receivers for the signal transmitted by a mobile terminal uh, or a mobile uh, station the base station determines or selects uh, the zone uh, site with the best signal reception and uh, uses it for downlink uh, transmission the zone sites are connected to uh, this base station these zone sites they are connected to this uh, base station with the high speed links like uh, uh, you can say ofc uh, or uh, uh, coaxial cable or uh, microwave link okay and these zone sites are connected to base station with these uh, high speed links and uh, uh, also uh, all the radio transmitters and receivers uh, that serve a microcell zone are uh, installed at the base base site and every zone site physically shares the same radio equipment installed at the uh, base site and uh, to serve a mobile unit up conversions and down conversions uh, take place at the zone sites and uh, uh, base site depending on the flow of signal uh, thus the zone site only requires an up down converter and a power amplifier uh, along with the low noise uh, broadband uh, wire amplifiers which is easy to install because of a small size and light uh, weight of the zone side operators okay when the uh, mobile node uh, travels from one uh, zone side to other zone site uh, in that case uh, uh, it doesn't require any uh, handoff mechanism uh, because it just switches the channel from uh, one to another and it uh, it is done by the base station itself and there will be no uh, burden put on the uh, msc at all okay now the applications of uh, this uh, micro cell zone approach is along uh, uh, highways and along the uh, urban traffic uh, uh, corridors uh, because uh, in these uh, areas uh, frequent handoffs uh, occur and that's why we use this approach uh, uh, at those uh, places 
and the advantages of this approach is reduced interference as the large center base station is replaced by several load transmitters that is the zone sites and the directional antennas that we used and no loss of trunking efficiency at as all the channels are used by cells because we don't create groups over here and all the channels can be used by all the cells and uh, no extra handoffs because of uh, uh, no uh, grouping of channels and uh, ultimately we will get uh, a an increased capacity because of a small cluster size fine so this is all uh, uh, about this uh, lecture and uh, thank you so much for watching